Well, good day, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of the Albino Rhino Beer Review. You have me, the Rhino. I'm looking at a beer that Colgate did drop off for me. Um, you'll notice when Colgate's involved, it's one of three breweries normally. It's going to be uh, Wellington, Block 3, or, you know, Chente, basically, because that's where he lives, right? Uh, and I'm really glad to get this one. Uh, this is an Imperial IPA by Block 3. This is... 1-Up IPA at 8.7% alcohol by volume. Uh, now, we also have talked so much about uh, trademark law over the last long little while. 1-Up is kind of a video game thing. I don't know if anyone actually would have that trademark. The gold coins, um, probably trademarked by Nintendo from Super Mario Brother. But that green mushroom with the two eyes, for sure trademarked. That being said, I... Uh, I love the uh, the retro feel, the 8-bit feel of this uh, of this label. This label is probably one of the best labels I've seen by them. Mostly because of that 8-bit feel. This and probably Dead Now. Dead Now had an amazing label as well. So let's pop this now. Today I'm not drinking out of proper fucking glassware. But I do have this beautiful thing that was in my six-pack from Colgate. Just a coaster, right? You think nothing of it. It's actually... Well, it is just a coaster, but it's it's a cork coaster. It's not actually cardboard, and it's a Block 3 cork coaster. So, though I do not have my Block 3 glass out, as I'm going to drink out of the Duvel glass, um, see how much stuff sticks to the sides of this. I haven't used this glass in years now. Uh, basically, because after this beer, I have a 600 milliliter bottle that I'm going to drink on uh, review, and then I'm done reviewing for the night, and I'm going to go to sleep. But I needed a big glass, so I grabbed this guy. And like I said, I haven't used this in years, so I'm sure there's going to be... Actually, that's not bad. There's just a couple clingers to the side. After years of neglect, this glass has almost no... Holy shit, look at how thick that is. What the fuck? Oh my god. Oh my god, the hot, hot particles that are in this are this scary. Uh, that is one of the thickest IPAs I've ever seen. It actually looks like pure on, um, pure on apple cider, really. Just pure pressed cider. Ooh. That is, uh, is hops. Lots and lots of hops. Mango, apricot. Mango, apricot, blood orange. Okay. Mango, op apricot, blood orange, some, uh, some spruce. Well, not spruce, more cedarish. Yeah, smells, uh, really good. Smells quite a lot like a lot of other double IPAs out on the market. However, this is a lot more fruit forward than a lot of them out there. A lot of them you get a more balanced fruit to uh, fruit to foresty uh, mix. This comes off more fruit to me than uh, than foresty, which I'm perfectly good with. Let's try it. Remember, 8.7% alcohol by volume. Cheerio. Wow. Just wow to that. Wow, that's uh that's exactly what you're smelling. But um what you smell is basically reversed to what you taste. It's a lot more resiny, a lot more woodsy than it was uh on the nose. On the nose it was more fruit forward. You are getting that pineapple, apricot, mango, blood orange flavoring. It's all in there up at the forefront. And it kinda does emanate out at the back too. But this is mostly all resin and uh, pine, resin pine, and maybe a little bit of dirt. So a little earthiness, a little, a little foresty, and resiny, and and sticks to the palate. Uh, really, this is a all-out good double IPA in the fact that it has the aroma that you want. Uh, an amazing, amazing visual appeal that's kind of scary at the same time, and then a. Uh, 
not as balanced as I'd like. There's not as much uh, malt malt bill in this as I would personally love on my double IPAs, but uh, really well made IPA. I mean, there is a nice caramel maltiness, and then you get all those different fruity flavors, and then you're left with a piney, resiny, dirty finish, and it lasts. I mean, it's still there right now, but it doesn't turn you off from going in for another sip, unless you hate hops. Yeah, that's not a bad beer. It's not a bad beer at all. Is it the... Is it the best double IPA I've ever had? Don't know if I could say that uh, at this point in my juncture. Up at the uh, beginning of my review times, probably, probably could say it. Is it a beer that I would say go ahead and buy? If you like double IPAs, go ahead and buy a bottle of this. You might really like it, you might not. But it's worthwhile to try it. Here's the thing about craft beer, Ontario craft beer and craft beer in general. For the most part, every beer is worth trying once. Uh, in all honesty, even even the big brands, every beer is worth trying once just to say you tried it. You might not like it. You never have to drink it again if you didn't like it. Just try it to try it. Out of 10 on this, I'd give it a solid 775. I actually really do enjoy this. It's just not... It's not made the way I would like it to be made for me to be able to go out and buy it all the time. But I could recommend this. I could buy it on the odd occasion if I'm at Block 3, which I've been to twice now. And I'm going to be to on more occasions. Anytime I go to visit Devon or somebody up in, in the Waterloo area, I will stop by Block 3. Um, but yeah, uh, if I was there and they had, say, their Saison, their Sugar Bush, and this, I'd probably buy two bottles of each just to have, even though of the three, uh, the Saison's probably my favorite. Uh, and I'm not a big Saison guy, so that kind of says something about the Saison, right? Uh, yeah, but it's a worthwhile trying, and it's not an overpriced brewery. They have fair prices, so thank you guys for watching a 775 out of 10. Thank you to all the guys at Block 3 for making another wonderful beer. Bye bye <laughs>